Hello beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. Pots and Petals here, everything garden and allotment related. We've got an absolutely gorgeous morning, the sun is shining and there's not many clouds in the sky. I didn't think I'd be able to get here midweek, but we have been able to, so happy days, an extra day of gardening. So today, if you remember last week or a few days ago, we were down in the wildflower area. So we want to finish that area off. And I've also got a rose that looks pretty dead other than this one stem. So we're going to try and take some cuttings from that today. I want to sow the last seeds for August. I've got some flowers to sow and I want to get the last of the carrots in as well. The area down by the poly house, that's looking quite untidy, so I would like to get in there with a pair of shears and maybe give it a mow. So I'm pretty sure we'll be able to find some other bits and bobs to do, so come on, let's get stuck in. Last weekend we focused on one end of this bed, so today I want to focus on this end. If you remember, we've got loads of seedlings in here. We've got forget-me-nots, calendula, poached eggplant and foxgloves, so I really need to watch out when I'm digging around in here. But to be fair, even if I do dig some of these plants up, there's plenty of seeds in the soil that will germinate between now and spring. So if you're in a similar position to me where you've got seedlings galore, don't worry too much if you do dig a few up because there, there'll be plenty that will come back. If ever you come across an annual that you would really like to keep but is growing amongst a perennial weed, I would always say remove the perennial weed and you will get that annual pop up somewhere else and you can just transplant it exactly where you want it. So let's get in here and see what we can dig out and what we'll try and save. It might not look like I've done much weeding to be fair, but all of those little seedlings in there that look like weeds, well they're actually plants. We've got the forget-me-nots, we've got a lot more foxgloves over on this side than what I thought. But like I say, I do get a bit confused between foxglove and sometimes borage and green aconite. So we'll see what they turn into. And then there's a couple of plants that I found in here. So we've got a bright pink uh, hollyhock. We've also got one of those pineapple bulbs. I can't remember the name, I'll try and find out for you. But yeah, we've got plenty of seedlings, so I'm just going to leave them in the ground. They will grow over autumn, winter and spring, and then I can give them a good old thinning out and decide exactly which ones I want to keep. But leaving them in over the winter and autumn period will certainly help protect all of that soil from the really harsh frosts and the really heavy rains that sometimes we get. You might have noticed that I collected some of the calendula as well because we've got so much seed there. So I might give some of that away and I've also sprinkled some of it along the front of the borders in the hope that we can have some marigold just pop up along there. And then I can fill the back of the borders with a little bit more height and some more sort of summer flowering perennials. Down at the other end, which we focused on at the weekend, if you remember, I said I accidentally pulled up a rose. So I planted that sort of in the middle of this big bed. I can't remember what type of rose it is. It's a cutting from my nan's garden, but it's got a beautiful smell. That's all I can remember. So I'm hoping that should get quite big and bushy. And then I've also planted up the Rudabecchia. I'm hoping that's gonna be perennial and survive the winter, along with the little Coreopsis just down at the front. It doesn't get very big, so I thought it would be best towards the front of the border. A little update from Hospital Corner. As you know, I do like to buy discounted plants and nurse them back to health. So this was the Black Lace Sambuca, and it was only four pounds, meant to be, I think, 25 or 30 quid. So a real bargain. The only problem was that it was looking quite twiggy and it didn't look like it was going to do much. However, it looks like we've got new shoots starting to form in about one, two, three different places. And it's shooting from the bottom all the way to the top. So the hope is that this little twig is going to bush out and turn into quite a big plant. August is a great time of year to sow your hardy annuals ready to flower next year. Sowing them now is going to allow them to bulk up over the winter and autumn period so that you get nice early flowering next year in the garden. All of these but the cornflower are new to me but if you want to know more about what I'm sowing in August please check out a video from a couple of weeks back. I go into a little bit more detail of why I've picked these plants and where they're going to be going in the garden but I also run through some vegetable seeds as well. 
So today we're sowing five flowers and a grass. So the grass is bunny tails, and I'm hoping to use that in the wildlife area as I want lots of white with the odd splashes of pinks and purples. Then down here we have got Clarkia, Candy Tuff, Cornflower, Peony Poppy and Larkspur. The Clarkia and the Candy Tuff are brand new to me and we've got eight rows here. So I'm gonna give them two rows each and all these flowers will be dotted around the plot, mainly in the wildlife areas, but I'll also pop them in some of the beds just to encourage those pollinators. All we're doing is filling these little pots up with some compost and perlite, which I've already mixed. So the perlite is just going to add lots of drainage to help with the root growth. And then we're just going to give the, a real good watering in before we pop the seeds on, because some of these seeds are quite small. So the last thing you want to do is water on top and they all wash away. So we'll give it a good soaking, then we'll sprinkle the seeds on top, give it a little coating of some sieved compost and then another little watering on top, just very gently. Then I'll stick these in the poly house where hopefully they will germinate. I've noticed this little bee that keeps flying in and out of this bamboo cane. So whether it's laid some eggs ready for next year or it's going to hibernate in here, I'm not too sure. But I'm going to make sure I leave this open. I give it another week and this will have loads of pretty exotic little flowers on. So this is the area down by the poly house. We need to give this a real good sort out. I mean, the wildlife must be loving it at the moment. Before I do anything, I am gonna run through there, just give it a kick around so that if there are any creatures, they'll run away and hide before I go in there with my shears. I've got the area around the shed to think about this year, but this is an area that I do need to think about because I don't have anything going on in here. At the moment, there's a buddleia in there. We've got two eucalyptus, and I think there's a rosemary hiding in there as well. So behind me we have got the big wildlife pond next to the wildlife area and then there's this space of bark chip where I used to have a seat just to sit and enjoy the wildlife but I'm thinking about digging that over and planting that up and then that will lead on to this area with the pond and then we've got the buddleia and the eucalyptus there. Now my thoughts are I could make that pond a little bit bigger and use up some of this space but this does get a lot of sunlight so it would be another good place for a bed. I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with it just yet. It's definitely something to think about for future years. Hey, we're giving that a good tidy up. You can actually now see the bird bath that was in there. I forgot about that. And then we've got the rosemary, which is looking a little bit leggy because it's been trying to get some sunlight amongst all of that grass. And the buddleia, we won't do any pruning with that until the spring. And then the two eucalyptus. One of them seems to have died, but the other seem to be absolutely fine. I've got some log piles and some stone piles down by the pond. So I've just taken some of those grass clippings and sprinkled them all on top, just so that it creates a nice little layer on there for some of those insects to get down and hibernate over the autumn and winter. You can see that I've left all round the back of the pond how it is. It's a nature pond, so I'm not really too fussed about keeping it too tidy over here. If anything, that grass was starting to shade the poly house a little bit and those tomatoes really do need to ripen off. So I just wanted to cut all of that down. 
I can't remember the variety of these strawberries, but I just bought them because I love the pink flower. They normally have a white flower on them, but it looks like we're going to be getting a late harvest of strawberries. I haven't got any plans for this bed, so instead of leaving it empty, we're going to grow some green manure over the top. And we're going with a crimson clover, which is meant to be one of the best nitrogen fixers. So next year, this bed would be great for anything with any really leafy greens, such as your brassicas. Green manure is going to do three things. It's going to suppress the weeds from growing in this area because this is going to take over. It's going to create a protective layer over the winter. And in the UK, we get very heavy rainfall now in our winters. So it's going to protect all of the nutrients being washed out, but also that flattening that you can get. And finally, it's going to add a lot more nutrients into the soil. So the plants are going to draw out nutrients which are normally fixed into the soil. And then you're going to allow those plants to grow. But then just before they flower, you're going to dig them back into the beds. And that's how you're going to add all those extra nutrients in. You want to chop them down before they start to flower so that they don't set seed. And you want to be digging them in probably three to four weeks before you need to use the bed. That's all we've got time for today folks. So we've managed to get the area down by the poly house all nice and cleared. So that's looking neat and tidy. And also the wildlife slash decorative planted area with all the flowers. That's looking a lot neater and tidier ready for the autumn. And we've also sown some hardy annuals ready for next year as well. So I'm pretty chuffed with what we've got through today. And for those of us in the UK, we've got the summer bank holiday this weekend. So that means three solid days down at the plot. And I'm sure I'll bring you guys along with me. In the meantime, take care guys, and I'll see you all very soon. See you later. Bye-bye.